So we want to welcome everyone to the Southeast Animal Science Lunch and Learn. And it's hosted by the Southeast District Animal Science team listed there. We're going to get started in today's topic is selecting replacement heifers. We're going to dive deeper into the economical important traits. So first, when we consider the following list of traits when selecting a replacement heifers, um, number one being early growth, weaning and yearling weights, two, early puberty, three, fertility, four, calving ease, five, milking ability, six, structural soundness, seven, temperament and disposition, eight, fleshy ability, nine, muscle thickness, and ten, frame size. So all of these different characteristics fall into um, selecting your females um, for future and longevity of your herd. Um, when we take a look into early growth and weaning and yearling weights, uh, we want heifers, larger heifers tend to be older, which just technically means that they are out of an earlier calving cow. And two, the larger heifers tend to be out of the heavier milking um, females. And three issues when selecting those larger heifers, um, one, you're going to have higher birth weights of your prodigy. Two, larger mature cows, uh, larger in size or increase in maintenance and require um, more input. That may be too high for your program. Uh, three, steers that finish out higher than optimum slaughter weights. Um, those heavier steers won't be compatible for your, your market end product. Diving deeper into puberty, early puberty, the younger heifers begin to cycle uh, quicker, or the younger a heifer begins to cycle, the better the chances are of her conceiving at an earlier age, because um, you want these, these animals to be exposed 12 to 15 months of age, um, allowing them to have a calf at age 24 months. Early puberty is moderately high a heritability trait and appears to be positively rate related to the heifer's future re reproductive and fertility efficiency. All right, next we're going to go into fertility. Um, fertility is really important when you're working with your cattle and trying to keep your herd going in a positive direction. Fertility is your pregnancy rate. The It's very heritable. It shows fertility to be a success, you know, a, tr a low side um, but because the reproductive rate is so important economically you don't want to ignore it when you're in your selection process. Good goals would be 60 to 70 percent first service conception rate so that's the first time you put your bull in your first service of AI 60 to 70 percent um, and 90 to 95 percent pregnancy rate after no more than 65 days of breeding so you want to think about those cows that's got that um, good pregnancy rate, you know, they're putting a calf on the ground for you every 12 months. Um, even if you have some cows, if you're real lucky, you'll have some that's putting them on a little bit closer than 12 months, you know, 11, 11 and a half months, um, and still keeping a good body condition. Those are the cows that you're going to want to look at their heifers, um, their heifer calves as your replacements. Ease of calving, you want to really focus on ease of calving. Dysocia is when you're having calving difficulties. Um, you know, that's something that we think about on our own personal farm is those first calf heifers, are they going to have a problem with calving? You don't want to keep any that's going to give you issues. If you've had mothers, it's not really heritable, but if you have mothers that are always giving you problems with having to pull calves, you need to really think about that when you're thinking about your heifers. Um, those first calf heifers, you could have some issues with about 30% of them, um, and that could really drop down your numbers, uh, about 10% of your calf mortality rate, which is, you know, could be detrimental depending on the size of your herd, but on an economical standpoint, any lost calves is it's definitely a financial impact. In some herds, heifers with dystocia can run well over 50%. Um, that's in addition to increased calf losses, Heifers that require assistance are more difficult to breed back. So there can be a lot of trauma that's inflicted, um, whether it's to the uterus or the whole reproductive tract, if you're having to pull a lot of calves out of heifers. 
and that's going to be more than detrimental when you're trying to breed them back. They're not going to breed back after 12 months. You're not going to get another calf in 12 months. You're going to be 15 to 18 months out, which is going to mess up your calving season. So think about that when you're thinking about replacement heifers is your ease of calving. Milking ability is not highly heritable as growth rates. Um, you know, you want to think about when you're replacing heifers, if you want to stay away from the heifers that are overly fat from nursing a heavy milking cow, um, that can reduce her own milking ability. And that's, you would think that it wouldn't bother the mammary glands, but it actually can because they're not going to develop um, <clears throat> during the growth period. They're going to be replaced with fat and that's going to lower their abilities to milk out. So, so that can be an issue down the road if you get your uh, replacement heifers too fat or they're milking off of a heavy milking dam. Um, for the commercial producer, the easiest way to increase milk is to crossbreed with a sire from a heavy milking breed. So you can um, also check out the EPD scores and uh, check that out so you can use bulls that are going to increase your milking ability. One factor that uh, it's really important to pay close attention to in your herd is your structural soundness. When you're re picking replacement heifers, um, that's definitely one factor that is going to be the longevity of your herd is talking about the skeletal factor of your cattle. Um, you want to make sure that they don't have a lot of feet problems. Some of the common ones that you're going to find is um, maybe they have excessive growth. They can have curled claws, small feet, weak pasterns, shallow heels and steep pasterns. Some of the hind limb issues, you can see post leg, sickle hocked, cow hocked, bow legged, um, front problems. You can get where they're steep shouldered, uh, buck kneed, knock kneed, bow legs, flay footed, pigeon toed, um, even coarse open shoulders. So those are all conditions that you want to stay away from. There's a chart here that kind of gives you an idea of what some of those might look like when you're looking at the different angles of the cattle. Um, you might also want to think about staying away from cattle that are uh, real straight, so maybe post-legged or steep-shouldered, buck kneed. Any of those can be severe issues that can give you problems in, with the longevity of those heifers in your herd. Um, if they can't walk around because they're structurally not sound, they're not going to be able to walk to feed, they're not going to be able to hold up when they're carrying a calf or when they're mounted by the bull to breed. So those are things that you really need to pay attention to is your structural soundness when you're looking at replacement heifers. Another thing that you want to look at um, that maybe you don't think about with structural soundness would be like checking out their eyes, um, seeing if there's a pigmentation in the eyelid or skin around it. Um, if there's not, they could be more predisposed to eye cancer, or cancer of the eye, um, and that's going to cause some issues with some blindness and things like that that can be passed on. Something that's not very common is jaw defects, so you want to think about looking at that. If you have any cows that are what they call parrot mouth, um, that's just where the, the jaw is overshot, and that's going to cause a problem with the heifer's ability to, to consume forages, and that can be um, detrimental to making sure that they keep the, the body condition score that they need. So you want to pay attention to that. And then um, another thing that you might not think about with soundness is their mammary system. If you have heifers that, um, they're virgin heifers, they haven't been bred or anything, and you see that their um, teats are barely visible or they appear to be embedded into the nest of the long hair or fatty tissue, you want to stay away from that, and you also want to stay away from any of them that have um, teeth that are too long or too thick. That's only going to give you problems when they when they calve down the road. Um, another thing, and this is something that we are sticklers on our farm when we have replacement heifers, is the temperament, the disposition of your cattle. Um, we always laugh, and even our, our vet kind of laughs and jokes with us, saying that we have such wild, crazy cattle um, they're not by any means, you know, they're either bucket broke or halter broke or they're, they're not the average cow, but temperament and disposition is something that is, you know, transmissible trait that goes from, you know, cow to offspring and things like that. So cattle with an extremely bad temperament can be very difficult to handle. They can be dangerous. Um, and if you've got a heifer that's, uh, 
difficult to handle or, or has a bad temperament, that can only be heightened um, generally when they when they do conceive and then they do calve that can be heightened and become very dangerous if you're needing to work with the calf which you know when a calf hits the ground you always want to be able to check it and tag it and take care of it like it's supposed to so that can be an issue extremely nervous females have a lower ai conception rate um, more than quiet females they're just going to be more nervous so um, more likely not to conceive if you're handling them quite a bit through the AI process. It's wise to call heifers having bad dispositions just because they're apt to create problems in the overall herd management. And that, that's true in many factors. If you have um, a heifer or, or a cow or something that's got a lot of uh, disposition issues, maybe they're dangerous, you get one that's spooked and running around, generally um, you'll have some others in the herd that's gonna do the same thing. So uh, if you're not, into having really wild and aggressive cattle. Those are definitely ones you don't want to keep. It's not something they generally grow out of as they age. So we'll move on to the next slide and Britt's going to take over. All right, moving on to fleshing ability and that just refers to uh, how easily a heifer will fatten up. Uh, usually heifers that uh, flesh easily are easy keepers. They can maintain a body condition score on lower quality feeds with uh, less total feed energy. They're also more likely to breed back on schedule year after year. But of course, uh, beyond a certain point, flesh inability becomes a liability uh, because it's uh, running contrary to the consumer's desire for leaner cuts of beef. Uh, fertility is also apt to be reduced in overweight heifers. The goal here is to avoid the extremes, heifers that are obviously too lean in their appearance and heifers that are predispositioned to become overly fat. Uh, when purchasing replacement heifers, it is important to determine how they were, were fed before, they were, before making those decisions on their condition or fleshing ability. If they have received an adequate diet, their condition score should be a minimum of five on a one to nine scale. We're ready. The next trait we're going to look at is muscle thickness. Uh, there has been an emphasis on greater muscle thickness of late, uh, and this is related to the muscle to bone ratio on the carcass. Again, here we're avoiding the extremes, heifer, heifers that are obviously too narrow or flat or light muscled, and then heifers that are extremely thick and coarse and highly defined in their muscling across their body. Uh, frame size is another important economical trait when evaluating your replacement heifers. Uh, frame size is measured by their hip height. Uh, it is highly heritable and um, responds to that selection. The average frame of the commercial cattle population is estimated to be somewhere around five on a one to nine scale. Most of the population ranges from three to seven. Uh, in commercial herds, it makes sense to cull heifers that are smaller framed than four and larger framed than seven. Uh, in purebred herds, an uh, acceptable frame score will probably depend on whatever the breed standard or uh, industry trends are. So obviously larger framed uh, breeds, you're going to accept larger frame scores for those heifers. So when do we make uh, these decisions? Uh, to allow some room for selecting on traits other than fertility, it's uh, necessary to retain about half to two thirds of the heifer calves at weaning time. Uh, you should let these heifers be fed on a growing diet to gain, to gain an average of a pound and a quarter to a pound and a half uh, a day from weaning to puberty, which should take you know, 12 to 14 months, and then uh, do a second culling at that time. You'll want to make another cut after a pregnancy exam of those heifers once the breeding season is complete. 
Uh, you can then make a final culling decision after the, after the remaining heifers have weaned their first calves on all the traits that we've talked about today. All right. Um, this is the last uh, series in our Animal Science Lunch and Learn series. So I want to thank everybody for joining us. And um, if you do have questions, feel free to reach out to your local extension educator or the educators on this PowerPoint.